Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today is April 28th, 2016, and this is the Kane Kill Show, episode 290, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Keenan Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today, we are going to be talking about constructing bodies and getting back to basics, right? But before we get into that tutorial, we need to take a stroll down, or rather, up the lovely lane because you guys have been being awesome and submitting your beautiful art. So thank you so much for liking the page on the Facebook, submitting your art. If you haven't joined us yet, please go to that tiny URL slash cancalfanart, submit your stuff, get featured on the show. That could be you scrolling past right there. And uh, most importantly, come get some cookies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into today's show. And we're going to start things off today with a question. We're going to start things off today with a question because you might be wondering, why are we doing bodies in perspective? And uh, the idea came from this question at the KM Kale MZ. KM Kale. <laughs> and this comes from Meebly Glort. And he's asking uh, I draw a lot, but most of my work ends up kind of flat. I tried practicing dynamic angles and foreshortening and all that stuff. And this is a, a common problem that a lot of artists have. Uh, where they want to draw like these dynamic angles, right? With like this character punching right at you, right? And then they're like, okay, great. So let's uh, let's go onto Google. Let's go onto Google and search the images to find somebody in that exact pose, right? Or um, they're trying to like take a picture of themselves. Oftentimes I end up taking a picture of myself with my webcam, but then it's not quite exactly. It doesn't have the same power. Like you can you can have like the hand, but then what about if you want like the body like going back and then the leg out like this? You know, it gets really hard. So what's important to do is to learn how to construct bodies. And hey, that's interesting. That's the title of today's show. So we're gonna go ahead and get into that. All right, all right. And for those of you who don't know what the Kane Kale MZ is. Uh, I might as well just uh, tell you about that right now. It's a new site where you guys can go. It's a new community for Kane Kale where you guys can post your art as well as most importantly, your questions. And it's a place where I actually do look at all the comments and look at all the questions. And it's just a nicer place. It's a nice place to have everything like, um, what's the word, organized, right? It's a lot better than YouTube comments. So if you guys are interested about joining and it's an exclusive thing. So if you want to join, you got to go to that website, submit your email, and I will either approve or deny you based upon how amazing you look, right? No, I'm just kidding. I let everybody in, but yeah, you got to send your thing over. All right. So uh, that's enough blabbing. Let's go ahead and get into the actual tutorial. And hello, blank canvas, my old friend. We're going to be starting with you today. Oh yeah. And this is a part of our back to basics thing. So let's not forget about last week's episode. We talked about how to draw faces. So if you're interested in how to draw faces and put those together, go ahead and click on this thumbnail right here. It'll take you back a week and you can see how we did faces. But today we're starting with bodies and we're starting with a blank canvas because I know this is what all you guys are afraid of, but fear not, I'm gonna show you how to work with your blank canvas. And I'm gonna start with a tip that I left out last week. And that is that if you want to start your sketches, I would highly recommend that you do not work with a straight white canvas because it's very like straining on the eyes. And so what I like to do is I immediately like to pull up my hue tool by hitting control U and go to lightness and just darken it down just a few notches. You don't have to go all the way like down to gray, but like see how this is just like easier to look at if you drop it down maybe like 10 degrees. Okay. And then for your sketch uh, color, some people like to use blue. Some people like to use red. I like to usually go, I don't know. Sometimes most of the time I end up going purple. Don't ask why, I don't, I don't know why I do. But the most important thing is, is that you don't want your value for sketching to be too dark. Because if you start doing this and then you start sketching in like a body, like it's okay, but it's like really, oh, this is like really hot by the way. Mm, mm. Yeah, sexy lady, mm. Um, But uh, it's just a little too dark for me. Whereas if you want to do uh, sketching, it's much easier to have a lighter value. And I find it easier to like pull out shapes and just do uh, different things like this. There we go. Yeah. And look, just by picking a lighter color, we can automatically do dynamic angles. Look at this. Now our hips are coming right at us. And then our hand is coming right at us. Oh my gosh, it's the Ari pose all over again. Okay, so anyway. Uh, but that's what we're talking about today. Okay? Before, But before we get into dynamic angles, we're going to be talking about constructing bodies. Construction of bodies. Because Mibli Glort, as you asked, there's not a lot of things, there's not a lot of references that you can find online for this stuff. So the answer is that you have to learn how to construct bodies. You have to learn how to construct 
bodies simply before you begin drawing them in crazy perspectives. So let's go ahead and get started with that, shall we? So we're gonna create a new layer on top of our background, which we didn't do at the beginning because I'm awesome. Um, yeah, and we're gonna do it right this time. Okay, so let's start with our basics. And I know why y'all shut up, you wanna know how to draw a lady. So let's start with a lady. So here's how I like to, this is kind of touching on what we did last week, okay? So you notice when I draw in the head, it's sort of like this almond shape. Why is that? Well, it's because from last week, it's the circle with the chin shape, but I just simplify it to almond shapes, or almond shapes as, I'm, as my throat closes up. Ah, but uh, I literally just woke up and I haven't eaten yet, but uh, shows my dedication, right? And my guilt for doing this on a Thursday as opposed to a Tuesday. But, uh, oh, and speaking of that, I have been busy with something. I do have an excuse. I have an excuse, but I can't tell you what that is yet because all I can say is that I've been working on something really awesome and I'm gonna be able to show it to you probably in about a week and a half and then we'll be doing something really awesome with that. But uh, for now, it's just been making my dailies late and I do apologize for that. Okay, so anyway, um, so here's the main things that you wanna consider when you're constructing your bodies, right? So head shapes, right? I like to use these almond shapes. It's really easy to just kind of lay that in and then you can easily like kind of draw some eyes on there, right? So there you go. Ha! Ah, oh, look at that. It's already got some expression. Now for ladies, here's a really cool thing that you can do. So we all know about the good old hourglass shape, right? Good old hourglass shape. But you want to, probably one of the most important things that you can do is understanding your proportions, okay? Now I just eyeball this stuff. I've done it so many times that I barely even have to think about it. But a good way to kind of gauge this is you wanna be thinking about the distance of your head or the size of your head. And I'm sure you guys know where I'm going with this, right? Because one head down, right? If we take this exact distance and we go down again, right? That is going to be, actually this head is kind of big. So it should be a little smaller than that. Yeah, so exactly that distance down again is gonna be right where the chest is, right? So now we know, now we know. So actually this is, a little bit too, uh, we need to make this torso a little bit longer. So there we go. Okay, so that should be right about where the boobs go. Okay, perfect, awesome. One head down, boobies. The most important part, arguably. Arguably the most important part. Okay, so now you have this shape, okay? So I want you guys to get used to this shape right here, okay? Cool, awesome, we have a really simple thing. We're not worrying about musculature, we're not worrying about skeletal structure, none of that crap. I want you guys to think about, we are sculpting this character from digital clay, okay? We're just slapping together pieces and uh, we're creating sort of like an action figure or like a Barbie doll, if you will, okay? Not a Barbie doll face though. All the faces should be different and all your bodies should be different too. But this is just the general like superhero heroine body, right? Okay, so continuing. Um, so now here's a really important thing to do. So a lot of people ask, oh, Keenan, how do I put on the legs? How do I do that? How do I know how to even bother doing that? So here's what I like to think about. You wanna think about your character wearing a one-piece swimsuit, okay? So take a look at this. So you draw this line over, right? See how I've drawn that line over? If there was no leg attached here, it would be like a mannequin type of thing, right? But she is gonna have legs, okay? And the best way to figure out how to draw in those legs is create this little curvature right there that's going to represent our um, our leg connection, right? And I like to think of it as like a one-piece swimsuit, okay? Now, for the legs, here's a really important thing to do for the legs is, and if we carry down our, let's go ahead and carry down our proportions because this is also very, very important, very, very important. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and do that. And I want to actually just duplicate this down multiple times. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if I can figure that out. Okay, so there's two, and then, oh, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And uh, you might be wondering, oh, Keenan, how tall am I supposed to make my characters? Usually you wanna go around like seven, seven and a half heads, right? I found works really well, most of the time. Again, all characters are different, but this is just your baseline, okay? So what I want you guys to notice is when you're creating these characters is, just draw a line across and notice, hey look, that second head goes right through the chest. This uh, third head goes right around where the belly button is. The fourth head is right at the crotch line, awesome. And then just pay attention to where each of those heads lines you up with your body, 
okay? And then use that, use that knowledge as you go forward, okay? But we are continuing with our drawing. Okay, so legs, okay? So I'm sure many of you guys have drawn legs before and you're like, oh, I know how to draw legs, right? It's just two pieces, right? You just go down and then you do a knee and then you do that and then there's a foot, right? No, that is not how you draw a leg, okay? A leg is not a straight line. Contrary to popular belief, your legs are not straight, especially when you're standing, right? When you're standing and you have weight on them, your legs have to have a bend to them. They have a bend. And what is that bend, you may ask? Well, it is an S bend, it is an S curve, curvature that is happening. This magical little thing right here is gonna be your new best friend when you're drawing legs, okay? And let me show you why. Let me show you why, okay? We're gonna get to that. <laughs> I need to move this over a little bit so we have some more room. Okay, so here's why the S curve is gonna be your new best friend. Because you're gonna draw it right from this point. Starting from that crotchal region, right? You're gonna draw your S curve out, okay? And then right where that S curve ends, right? Right, see how we brought it down to about that, is that the seventh head? Yeah, I think it's the seventh head. So yeah, right around that seventh head is where you will bring your ankle. That is gonna be your ankle bone, okay? So let's go ahead and draw in the rest of this leg, okay? And here's why the S curve is so handy. So freaking handy, okay? So you can draw in a little uh, circle to represent your knee. But here's the most important part of a leg to show that it is actually supporting weight, is that you're gonna to want to have the second part or this calf muscle go out and then in, out and then in. And then you're gonna have the other calf muscle right in here, just go out just a little bit, a little bit. And then this connects to your knee, okay? Ah, do you see that? Oh, it has so much more weight to it. It looks so much more graceful and beautiful and awesome. And then you can kind of erase this like this line right here, this actually represents your bone. This represents the bone. And in fact, you can even feel it, right? It's your shin bone. So if you place your knee up and then you draw or you feel your leg along with me, you can feel the bone that goes right down. And then look at that. It does connect right to your ankle. Connects right to your ankle right there, as you can see, right? <laughs> and there's your nice dynamic angle for you right there, okay? So that is what we are representing there. That is what we're representing. And the, the S curve, as I put it, really just helps to add that um, necessary weight. Just add so much more weight and it makes your character feel like they're indeed standing up as opposed to having that straight feel, like that tubular feeling of uh, just the other legs, okay? So then um, let's talk about feet. A really easy way to draw feet is like this. Easy way to construct feet. So uh, many people would say, okay, let's draw a foot. And then you do this, right? And you'd say, where is the bending point of that foot? Where is the pivot point of that foot? And you'd be like, oh, it's on the heel. So I should put like a circle there and then draw a foot out from the heel. No, don't do that. And this thing is running and it should not be. Turn that off. Okay, um, but the heel is not your pivot point. It is not. Your ankle is your pivot point. Okay, so let me show you a really cool way to draw feet, okay? So with the circle at the pivot point, which is your ankle, you're gonna draw a little bit of a hoof, right? You're gonna draw a hoof down, okay? Your character is going to become a satyr from, from World of Warcraft for a moment. Okay, and then off of that, you'll have your toes, but then all you have to do to make it a human foot is add the heel on. Ah, isn't that awesome? Now you have a nice depth, right? You have some nice depth in that arch support region and you have a nice foot ready to bend at the ankle. Okay, now let's put it into practice. Let's put it into practice right here. Okay, so with what we've just learned, circle at the pivot point, hoof down, hoof down. And you wanna make sure not to make this hoof like, I mean, depending on if your character is wearing high heels or not, you, you wanna be careful not to make this hoof like too deep, right? Cause you don't wanna do this and then and then have the heel like that. Doesn't necessarily work that way. It would, however, if your character was wearing a high heel though. See, see, because then your foot can go down like that. But uh, just keep that hoof area in mind, that slope in mind. It's not too deep, not too deep. Okay, so here we go. There's that. You go and add those toes on there, okay? And keep in mind, this stuff is just really, really rough. But see how, even though it is rough, 
See how we add that, add that heel in there? And look, it actually looks like a nice foot. It's a nice start, it's a good start for our foot. And going back to simplicity, guys, um, we're gonna eventually take these shapes, right? Everything that we've learned here, we're gonna take these shapes and we're gonna draw a dynamic angle at the end. And uh, I'm thinking maybe we'll focus on the girl today and then next week maybe we'll focus on the guy. Because I was hoping to do both today, but it's just like, it's it takes a while. It, it does take a while for sure. But uh, a lot of the principles that we learned today will translate over to the guy as well. Okay, but anyway, let's talk about the other leg. The other leg, okay? Because I'm sure now that you've learned about the S-curve, you're gonna go and be like, oh, I know how to draw legs now. Okay, it's all about the S-curve. So now to draw the other one, right? Now to draw the other one, well, we did an S-curve this way. So to draw the other leg, we're gonna have to mirror it, right? So the, the S-curve is gonna go this way. And then let's like draw in the leg like that, right? And then the foot, right? Oh, wow, I can draw, I can draw sexy ladies, awesome. No, this is not the way that you do it. <laughs> because an interesting thing is going to happen here. The S curve is actually not going to mirror itself, but rather it is going to replicate itself. It is going to replicate. See how we have the S curve like this? The S curve on the other side is actually going to be the same. But the implication of it or the use of it is gonna change slightly, okay? And I'm actually gonna move this leg in just a tad bit. Move it in because we are using Photoshop and we can do that stuff. So let's go ahead and move that in. Ah, awesome. And if you're curious how I did that, I just lassoed it, hit Control T, and then I hold Control as I hit this little node here. And look at that, you can reposition your character's foot wherever you want. Ah, awesome. Very, very cool. All right. I'm treating you as though you have not learned any of this. It's all back to basics, okay? So don't be offended. Don't be offended if you already know that, okay? Don't be offended. In fact, I don't even care if you are offended. Doesn't matter. <laughs> because this is my show. <laughs> okay, anyway. Anyway, okay, so let's go ahead and get into this S-curve. Okay, so the implications of this S-curve are much different. I can't believe I'm being, I'm being so rude today. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry if I'm being rude. But um, I don't know, I'm just feeling good. Feeling good today. It's probably because I finished up what I'm really excited to show you guys in a few weeks. <laughs> I finished up something that I've been working on for a while. Okay, so anyway, uh, so I put in that S curve, but immediately, immediately, trying to sneak one by you, I put in this little shape right here. And what is that? That is actually the knee that is sticking off, the knee that is popping out a little bit. Because here's what you wanna think about as far as your legs go. So the legs, rather than being this type of shape, right, for the thigh, say like, okay, here's the shape of the thigh, and then here's the ball socket joint for the knee, and then here's the calf, right? Instead of thinking of this in a straight line, what I want you to think about is the depth of the knee, right? So you have, so this is actually very much the same, but then the calf is going to come back. It's gonna come back like this, right? And this is a little bit exaggerated, but it's to prove a point. All right, so the calf is gonna come back like this and your leg actually does more so one of these. I'm gonna like, put that hoof on there. Boom, there's your foot, right? And that is, well, that is very exaggerated, but it's much better. I would rather you guys do this type of stuff than to have the straight leg syndrome thing going on. But it's important to show, especially because this is from the side, that little bump that comes out because of the knee. Don't forget about that bump, guys. Okay, so that's what that was right there. Okay, so now let's uh, trace the line from the butt behind, right? Let's imagine the butt cheek behind, right? <laughs> and how it connects to this leg back here. It's gonna come down. And then look, we're gonna do that same thing. The calf is gonna stick out a little bit. And we're gonna come on down. Come on down to our uh, pivot point, our ankle. Okay. And then we're gonna draw in our hoof. Hoof me. There you go, and then there's our other foot. Ah, oh, brilliant. Brilliant. And that, well, I was trying to simulate a little bit of uh, depth in that one, but clearly we made this leg a little too short. So let's go ahead and fix that with our awesome digital tools. Go ahead and enlarge that a little bit. Ah, much better, there we go. Now she doesn't have one freakish short leg. She doesn't have to wear one platform shoe. 
All right, and that's beautiful. All right, guys. So, but do you see how nicely uh, doing the swimsuit technique? It just makes it really easy to figure out where uh, where this comes in handy is because this is exactly this line right here. This is exactly where the leg bends as you will move it up and down. And that's going to come in handy later when you want to do more dynamic angles. Meebly Glort. That was your name, right? Make sure I'm not slan slandering your name. Meebly Glort. Yes. All right, cool. Meebly Glort. It's going to come in handy to know where those bending points are. So that's going to come in really, really um handy. I wanted to use a different word because I said that like five times. All right. But anyway, let's move on to the arms. Arms are much easier, arguably. Okay. Much easier, arguably. Okay. So, uh, another thing that I like to do, uh, for a general purpose is that for girls, I like to make the hips about the same distance as, or uh, about the same width as the shoulders for guys, their shoulders are way bigger. They can be way bigger, but uh, for girls, I like to keep them very close to the same width as the hips. Okay, so uh, first thing is go ahead and put on that good old shoulder right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to create the first thing, the first uh, appendage, right? And I'm just gonna draw this. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna draw this and I want you guys to notice interesting things that will happen, right? I want you to pay attention to the shapes that I'm using and knowing what we learned, I'm giving you a hint, knowing what we learned about the leg, there may be a certain flow that happens with the arm. Now I want you to see if you can pick that out. See if you can actually see that. Hmm, interesting. Interesting use of shapes. Now why did I use those ones? And here's why. Because there actually is a flow, a certain flow to your arm as well, right? And it can be an S shape. It can be an S shape. I like to exaggerate my um, body shapes just for I don't know, it's kind of more of a stylistic thing. But in general, yes, there actually is a flow to your arm that does resemble an S, especially from this angle. And here's why. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Okay, so here is what will represent your shoulder muscle, okay? And it's like separated into three, but I'm not bogging you guys down with all that anatomy and crap today because we don't, we don't really need that. We don't really need that just yet. We don't need that right now, right? You want to think of globular things. You want to think about clay. You want to think about shapes, putting those things together. Okay. So off of your shoulder comes your bicep. Okay. Your bicep is going to come out like this. And this is going to be a really beefy arm just to illustrate the point. Okay. And then back here you have your tricep, right? And that connects to like your bone and all that stuff. And then it comes down like this, right? So interesting. Look at how these two shapes Notice how these two shapes actually balance each other. It's really awesome how your uh, bicep comes down to here, right? Look at that little bending point. But then your tricep goes up to here, right? So you have like these two interesting points that are happening and then automatically there is like a flow that's happening here. But then here's the cool thing that happens. As you transition over to your uh, forearm, as you transition to your forearm, it's gonna do this. So here's your elbow right here. And then your forearm is actually going to come out like this. And then you're going to have like the carpy muscle and all that stuff. But uh, your forearm is going to basically going to, to do one of these. Okay. And maybe I should actually have it going straight down. Uh, yeah, I'll have it going straight down. It'll help illustrate the point a little bit better. Okay. So your arm goes down like this. Okay. And then off of that, you know, you'll have your little carpy muscle. But again, we're not worrying about that. We're not worrying about that just yet. There you go. And then you'll have your, your hand. And we'll just keep it simple for now. Okay. So that is the general idea of your, uh, that's the general idea of your arm. Now the way that I've gone in, cause this is like a musculature type of looking arm, right? But the way that I've simplified it is like this. Let's go ahead and shrink that down a little bit. Shrink that down a little bit, make a new one. So the way that I've simplified it is I said, okay, let's just make this a circle. Let's make this into one shape, right? So I kind of create one of these things. So see how I like curve that? Like I'm referencing over here, guys. So take a look at that. So I'm referencing this. I'm just making it into globs, basically globs. And then this shape actually fits kind of like that. It like fits into this part. And then this part, 
comes down. See, because you want to make sure that your forearm is overlapping, right? If you take a look at your own forearm, you can see that it does indeed overlap, right? The bicep doesn't go over your forearm, the forearm goes over the bicep, okay? And you can go down like that. Mm, create your little wrist joint there. My nose is so itchy. Oh, got it. Okay, and then there you go. But see how, look at that. Look at the flow that's happening in here. There's a minor S curve that's happening. And I think this is really the difference between like dynamic, dynamic anatomy and anatomy that just looks stiff. And the reason it looks stiff is because it looks like they're arms are like made out of sticks. Their limbs are made out of sticks. They're all straight. There's no organic flow to them. Whereas us as human beings, we've seen plenty of bodies, right? We've seen plenty of bodies. So we know that they are all like, there's, there's a very subtle flow that's going through all of them. So hopefully this opens your eyes a little bit more to how the arms work. Okay. And so with that in mind, let's go ahead and get back to this. I'm going to go ahead and grab this and make it a little bit bigger. Because, here's why I'm doing that. Here's why I'm doing that. Because you want the end of the hand to meet right about mid thigh. That's why. And uh, because I'm awesome and I don't get everything right the first time. Because I'm awesome and I know how to use digital tools to make up for my, uh, my shortcomings. That's why we did that. All right, cool. So now we have a very nice female body. Hmm, awesome. Isn't that great? Actually, looking at this now, I feel like this crotch maybe could come up a little bit. I feel like the legs could be just slightly longer. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm too used to the superhero uh, female female body. I think that's good. Yeah, yeah, I like that. No, that actually looks just fine. Let's roll with that. Okay, guys. So we have learned about everything that we need to, basically everything that we need to uh, for this tutorial. So now that we have some basic shapes of how to construct the body, let's go ahead and take all that stuff and let's put it into practice and let's make a dynamic angle. Let's make a dynamic angle now that we've learned about that type of stuff. Okay, so here we go. It's gonna be really, really easy. So let's take everything that we've learned today and let's begin. So let's say that we wanna have our character. Okay, well, the most simple, easy one is the character flying at you, right? With their fists like this. Oh, and this brings up a really important point. This brings up a really important point, and I'm curious if I should actually talk about this right now. Mm, actually, let's get into that in just a moment. Let's get into that in just a moment. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna actually draw out a thumbnail. You wanna draw out your basic, um, like your basic framing of your shot, okay? Now what this is gonna help you do is it's going to help you figure out what your camera is doing, like how, where your camera is in a sense. Um, and how close it's gonna to be to your character. And this is gonna come in really handy when we're talking about force perspective and like foreshortening, right? And I'm gonna get into that in just a moment. So let's, um, let's go ahead and do that, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna zoom in here. We'll make a new layer. And let's draw this character. Okay, so easy. All right, well, I know that I want to have the head right about here. And then let's go ahead and um, we know that we want to have the fist coming towards us. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we know that the fist is gonna be right around here. Okay, easy, easy. See how I'm just representing it with simple shapes, simple shapes. I'm not going in there and I'm like, okay, let's draw a hand. And I'm like looking at my my, my own fist and I'm trying to draw out like all the little tiny details one at a time. You know, I'm not doing that yet. I'm just laying in shapes because we want to get our basics down. We want to get our basic ideas down because tons of things are going to change as we go through this sketch. And I want you guys to notice that. Okay. So, um, so let's go ahead and draw in the body. Okay. Let's draw in the body before we even worry about necessarily like the arm and all that. Let's draw in the body. Okay. Now, because we know the body is that awesome, um, what was it? Hourglass shape, right? We're going to draw it from an angle. Okay. So how does an hourglass shape look from an angle? Well, let's say, uh, what if I tasked you to draw an hourglass shape or like an actual hourglass? What would it look like? Well, it would probably look something like this, right? But because our character actually is not anorexic nor wearing a corset and shoving all our organs into the upper part of her body, she actually is gonna have a little bit more um, depth there, right? So let's make sure that we don't make her too skinny, okay? So there you go. There's a good general start. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in on this even more. Um, now let's draw in the legs. 
okay? Now where are the legs gonna go? Let's say we want one bending up towards us, okay? Now remember what I talked about with that bathing suit technique? See if I draw that line straight across, I know exactly where that leg is gonna bend. And look at how simple this is, right? Drawing one leg like this. Then I'm drawing the, uh, right, the circle representing the kneecap. And then where's the leg gonna go from there? Well, we can do a couple different things. We can either draw it out like this, right? And then it's probably gonna look kind of weird uh, because the leg actually does not bend out like that necessarily. Because you wanna be thinking about your line of action. Where is your stuff going, right? Or in this case, I guess it's actually more so like your vanishing point, right? You wanna think about the action stuff. Like where is this action going? right? And all of these lines are converging back to a single point back in space. So the more that you can uh, refine that and reinforce that throughout your drawing, it's really going to help out a lot. It's really, really going to help. So having our action line or a point of action being right here is really cool. Okay. And then see how all of our lines can help to reinforce that. Now, the reason I say that is because knowing that um, technically, if we wanted to make this look really nice, the leg is actually going to be existing in a place where we can't really see it. It's actually, like if I was to draw in this foot, it's actually back here. It's actually back here and then kind of going down. So knowing that, it is okay for your character to kind of just come to a point at the knee, right? And then not really show anything after that. If you really wanted to, if it ends up looking weird, there are ways that you can remedy that later. Uh, but right now, again, we're just experimenting. We're experimenting. And I want you guys to be okay with uh, things not turning out exactly the way that you want them at the beginning. That's a good thing. That is a good thing, believe it or not, because you are experimenting. Okay? So let's go ahead and continue with this. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, so we got one leg in. Got one leg in. Um, another thing that I've found that helps is sometimes I'll draw in like little guidelines. Like I'll put a line right here that represents, hey, this is like the midpoint, this is the waist, this is about where the uh, belly button will go, right? And that really, really helps me out with uh, just kind of getting stuff laid in. Now this other leg, let's see here, interesting. You wanna think about it as far as, like some people like to draw out their figures this is where I'm gonna divert from a lot of other artists, or maybe like some of the art books that you've seen out there. And that is to be like, oh, well, when you wanna draw a body in perspective, right? If this character is like pointing at you, we'll just draw like, draw a cylinder. Draw a cylinder coming towards you, and then draw a little ball, and then draw another cylinder, right? And then draw the, the hand on top of that. And it's like, no, no. People are not made up out of cylinders. It's not, we're not robots, right? We're not freaking robots, and this doesn't, this crap doesn't help you. It really doesn't. See, what you want to do is you want to think about you want to think about organic shapes in time and space, right? That should have been the the title of today's show. It should have been organic shapes in time and space. Maybe that's what I'll call next week's show. Okay, but anyway, yes, organic shapes in time and space. So you want to play around with these things. You want to play around with these shapes, and you want to find shapes that work for you. But do you notice how? Right here, even on this leg, that's the beginning of the S-curve. It's the beginning of the S-curve, right? And see how this is the beginning of the S-curve, right? But it's going in space, it's going back, right? If we were to like lay this onto a plank, see how it's going back in space? So that same stuff is still in effect, and it's allowing me to have flow and a natural feel to my, my figures without drawing cylinders, okay? Because cylinders, I'm against cylinders. I'm anti-cylinder. So don't do that crap, okay? Don't do that. Because you're posting the stuff on the Facebook now, so if you do it, I will find you, okay? All right, so um, now this is also another good example. So this leg is going back, and you're like, okay, well, where does the other leg go? Well, actually, technically, this one could be gone too. We might not even see the back of the foot, you know? So in this case, I always like to have at least one of the legs showing. Have one of your legs showing. Because if you're doing this, yeah, you can kind of get away with it to, for the most part, but if your character doesn't have any feet, then it's gonna look really weird. So here's what I would suggest that you do. And it's a very simple fix, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to draw in, here, let me go ahead and erase this. So I want you to draw in the back end of this leg, right? Because as you pinch your leg together, right? Here's one half and then the other half is gonna be kind of like right there, right? Think about the the, volume of the leg behind, right? It's gonna be going back and then here's the foot, right? 
So something like that. But we're just seeing the very edge of that. And then you can draw in a little foot like that. And I like to create my feet like this. This is how I think of my feet. See, here's the heel and then here's like that and then here's your toes, right? But I usually just simplify even the foot shape to this. Simplify it to that, okay? So that's what you're seeing there, okay? Now look at that, ah, beautiful. Now it still does look a little weird, but whatever, we're just moving on. Moving on to the, uh, moving on to the arm, the arm, <laughs> if we can get that right. Okay, so the important thing about the arm to notice is that when you place your arm up, this is another thing that I do whenever I'm creating poses, is I like to do the pose and then I pay attention like relative, or I pay attention to like relative distance, right? Like, hey, when I do this, do you notice how my shoulder goes from here all the way up to here and it's nearly touching my cheek? So we wanna make sure that we do that. And notice how my torso even turns, right? My torso is turning. So same thing. If your character's eyes are right here, right? If your character is like this, like that, right? Then look at that, the shoulder goes right there. Now, let's go ahead and do the most important part, the most crazy part, and that is, how do you draw an arm? How do you draw that fist and that arm, right? Well, let's consult back to our shapes, right? Our shapes, and this is gonna be really easy. And in fact, this is gonna introduce something else that is very important, and that is um, the shapes that we're gonna use and basically the way that your bicep and forearm work. In fact, I'm gonna roll my sleeves up for this one, okay? And I'm gonna explain this. I'm gonna explain this before we get into it because it's really important. Okay, so if you see here with your bicep, right? And then your forearm, take a look at this. As I turn it towards you, do you notice an interesting, um, an interesting way that they interlock? Do you see how the bicep actually sticks out, right? So it's almost like an ovular shape that's going this way. And then the forearm also pokes up right here. So it's almost like an ovular shape going the other way. So it's almost like this interlocking. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about that. So it's an interlocking mechanism. So it's almost like this. So the bicep goes this way and then the forearm goes this way. Okay, so let's take that, let's take this relative thing and let's put it into practice. Okay, so we know that as this bicep comes toward us, it's going to tend to be an ovular shape like this. And then this part right here, and then this right here, this is basically our elbow. This is our elbow. It's being condensed so much that it has become just this shape, right? Our elbow is gonna be right there. And then off of that, and this is the part where you're really gonna, you're gonna love me after this, okay? Then your forearm is gonna come off of that, right? And don't forget, it has an ovular shape to it. it. Has that ovular shape going the other way, going the other way, okay? So it's gonna pop up a little bit and then it's gonna bend, right? It's gonna bend this way because we remember we talked about how this has a subtle bend to it. It's gonna bend. Okay, so it's gonna bend toward us. And then off of that, we're gonna have our hand. Oh, beautiful, oh, here we go. That, now the hand needs help. Now the hand needs help. Okay, so let's just go ahead and keep it, keep it simple. When in doubt, keep it simple, stupid, all right? Keep it simple to get it started. Okay, cool. <gasps> Whoa, look at that. Now if we erase, right, erase a little bit of this. Sometimes I leave a little bit of that, um, a little bit of those construction lines in there just to kind of get it started. Look at that. Oh my gosh. We just created a foreshortened arm and it looks proper. It actually looks right for the most part. All right. Now all these little intricacies and stuff with the muscles, uh, this is the point where, yes, photo reference is going to help. And this is the point where I would suggest that you at home uh, get your cell phone, or if you have a webcam, I find that they work really well. And then actually just get in there and take a picture. That way you can capture subtleties such as like, hey, this little muscle that seems to connect to the humerus right here. You wanna make sure that you show that little muscle right there and then that right there, you know, those types of things. Of course, um, and, and like 
you know, it goes different ways. I'm lucky that like I have the body of an athletic female, right? So when I'm drawing champions like Riven and stuff, I can just reference my own body. Um, <laughs> so it comes in really handy there. But uh, in terms of those detail type things, it's really, that's the point that you wanna have your photos out. But for the point that you are uh, creating and constructing, you wanna keep in mind these shapes. You wanna keep in mind those shapes, all right? So let's go ahead and just finish this up. Let's finish this up. So we learned that our, our torso is turning a little bit, right? So we're also gonna have, um, let's see, the other arm is going to be maybe sort of right there, okay? It's kind of just eyeball it. And then the chest, right? We can kind of, like this is the only thing that I would say that is hard and probably something that you will struggle with and know that it is a common thing, it is a normal thing to go through, and that is, well, Keenan, we learned about how the, the head shapes, right? We use the head shapes to know how tall to make our character. But when we're like this, you know, I can kind of take the head. I can kind of take the head shape. I can kind of take this head shape and then when I put it down, right? It's like, oh no, we're, we're like two heads down. We're like to the crotch already. Well, my character's too short. And then you end up making your character too long to try to compensate for that. But you have to understand that the heads are not the heads are not going straight down, right? They're in 3D space, they're in this tube, right? They're going back towards that, remember that vanishing point that we talked about. So rather the second head is gonna be like this. It's gonna be kind of like that. And then the third head is gonna be like that. And then the fourth head, the fifth head, and so on, right? They're going back in space. So this is the point where um, you can get away, like it doesn't have to be as perfect, right? It doesn't have to be as perfect. And you're gonna have to trust your eye on this. You have to trust your eye more than ever on this one, okay? So let's go ahead and, but yeah, in general, I like to think about it going back in space, okay? Think about your heads going back in space, okay? So there we go, we got the chest in there. Let's go ahead and let's say this other arm is, hey, you wanna know a really easy way to draw another arm? Okay, so like this, just have it behind the body and then all you gotta draw is the forearm and the other fist. Okay, but there was one other thing that we needed to talk about, guys. There was one other thing that we needed to talk about, and that is relativity, right? Relativity of um, like how close your body parts are versus the camera, the camera, okay? So here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and like reframe this character a little bit because I'll probably make this look a little better. Okay, so let's talk about relativity. And this will be the last thing that we talk about before we end today's show. And I hope that you guys have gotten some good, good value out of this. Okay, so let's talk about relativity. Because I know that many of you would wanna do something like this. Now that you've learned all about dynamic angles and I've taught you all my secrets, you at home are going to want to. <laughs> Again, I love, I love treating you like you, you literally like know nothing. It's like, it's kind of sad, but it's just... <laughs> It's always good to just assume that every, this is everybody's first episode ever. It's not, no disrespect. It is just assuming that this is everybody's first episode. Okay, so, um, <laughs> okay, so let's talk about relativity. Okay, um, here we go. So this character is gonna be like this, right? And let's say, okay, we want this character, say there's two characters, right? And then this character is more in the background. But we wanna make this like really epic. So let's have this character's arm like really big, right? And then it's like, oh my gosh, wow. Look at that dynamic angle, that's so beautiful. It's amazing, right? But then you ask yourself, why does that character look like they have a stretchy arm? Why does it look like a giant Hulk arm that's actually bigger than the character's rest of the body? Whereas where it was here, right? Actually, those two fists are about the same size, but now the body, right? The body's bigger to kind of make up for it. But uh, the thing that I'm getting at here is, is how big can, or how much can we push that perspective? How much can we push that foreshortening? And here is my best explanation of that. And the reason why I told you guys to lay out your framing device, your framing device. And that is because how close the camera is to your character has to do with how much you can exaggerate it. Now here's my example, okay? So, and this is about relative distance. And this is the best way that I can describe it. So take a look at this. If I place my finger up here, right, against next to the camera, do you notice how it is now bigger than my head? And that is because of relative distance. So let's take a look at this. 
So my finger currently is probably about one inch from the camera. And then my face is probably about 36 inches from the camera, or no, maybe like 24. Okay, so that's a one to 24 difference, okay? So my face is 24 times further from the camera uh, than my finger, okay? So that's why probably my finger is 24 times larger, making it as big as my head. So now here's what I'm talking about with relative distance. When I step away, and now I do that same pose, do you notice how now my finger is not the size of my head? And here's why. Because my finger is now 24 inches from the camera, and my head is 36 inches. I don't know, maybe, no, probably more than that. 48 inches. So it's only twice as big. The, the ratio, right, you wanna think about it in terms of fractions. It's only twice as far, as opposed to 24 times as far. Right? So that is why, that is why I want to tell you guys all the time, right? Uh, you want to keep in mind that relative distance. So if you want to be able to exaggerate stuff like really, so it's like in your face, you have to think about that camera is very close to that, that uh, character. So let's go ahead and put that in practice. And then we'll end today. All right. And I'm actually really happy with how today's show went. Really happy, really happy with that. So this has to do with framing, ladies and gentlemen, framing. And uh, because we totally mucked this up. Uh, let me go ahead and separate this character out because we need to talk about framing. There we go. Let's go ahead and color this character a different color just to make it look nice and pretty. Yeah, oh. Yay, there we go. And that looks really bad. There we go. There we go, okay, cool. Let's talk about framing. And what the heck am I doing? There we go. Okay, guys, so. In theory, so let's do what we just did. So if we make the character smaller, technically we are bringing the camera further away. Bringing the camera further away. So we know that now that fist and that head are um, much closer, right? The, the, the fractional difference is much closer. So we know that we actually can't get away with that fist being as large. We're going to have to shrink it down a little bit. We have to shrink it down a notch like that and the fist, okay? And again, don't be afraid of this being very um, sloppy, right? It can be sloppy, just kind of cut and paste, just kind of stick it all together, patchwork it, doesn't matter. So this is a proper rendition or a more proper rendition of the character at this depth, okay? But let's go back. Let's say that we actually move this character further into the frame, like we're getting closer now. We're actually getting closer. So that means, oh, and that actually captures two things. That captures two things. Not only are the things that are closer to you going to get even bigger, but the things that are further from you are technically going to get, well, smaller, I guess. Well, I guess just by relativity, they'll do that anyway. But then see how now that we've pulled the camera closer, now that I make the fist like huge, it actually doesn't look wrong. It doesn't look wrong because the character is so close. The character is so close to uh, our frame. So we can get away with that. We can get away with that. And this leg is coming towards us. I would say arguably, hey, let's make that leg bigger too. Let's make that leg a little bit larger too, right? But only the part that's coming towards us. So we can kind of control this or yeah, we can control, grab these little nodes here. Kind of do one of those, okay? So then our final piece is gonna look something like this. See how now when we zoom in because of the camera, see this looks fine. This looks absolutely fine. Whereas before, you know, we had this. We had this and that looked good. But as we get closer, you can exaggerate stuff more. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has to do with your relative distance. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and end today's show. I hope this helped you guys out a lot with your dynamic angles, your anatomy, thinking about not cylinders, but globular shapes, digital clay, stick those things together, realize the flow, look at the flow in your own body, look at the flow in other people's body. That sounds a little inappropriate, but you should do it anyway. Look around, take a look, and um, yeah, get some more natural bodies going, guys. Next week, we will probably go into male bodies because we gotta make sure we get those muscular dudes out there, and I know there are, it presents some unique challenges. Male bodies present unique challenges that we will deal with next week, and I'm excited for that. Um, yeah, so that's gonna end today's show. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. You guys have a great week. I'll see you next time, and until then, take care.
Oh! Oh yeah, and I forgot. <laughs> if you want to get today's PSD as well as all the other PSDs. Oh yeah, I didn't even do the sponsors. Oh, I am so bad. I am so bad. I am so sorry. Okay, let's get those sponsors out here. Thank you so much to my amazing sponsors. Laura Bashir, Cody Turner, Captain Big Butt, and David Chiariello. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show. I'm so sorry I didn't do this. Dude. I'm so bad. so bad. Everything was perfect up until that point. And my sponsors of the past, thank you guys so much. The show would not be the same without you. If you would like to sponsor the show and or get today's PSD and you want to look at this for yourself, then it is available on the Patreon. And what is the Patreon? It's a place where you can pledge, support the show, and download stuff, get all kinds of cool stuff. And if you're interested, then just go ahead and click on this picture right here. Click on this PSD. And yeah, you can download it. I already said everything else. Yeah, just, just go there and download everything and you'll have yourselves a good time. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, now we're actually done. So you guys take care and I'll see you guys next time.